Hello everyone. Welcome to the very first in my series on how to write a good manuscript or organized manuscript writing. What we're going to be talking about in this series is, in general, how to develop a well-written, well-organized, well-cited, well-crafted manuscript from beginning to end. Now, in some ways, I'm going to be focusing more on a thesis perspective from the manuscript, but this could be applied to anything from uh, an assignment for a university. It could apply to a research paper. It could apply to a thesis. It could apply to really anything. And the principles that I'm going to be talking about in this lecture are going to apply to basically anything. The reason why I'm doing this is a lot of times I, I see so, so, so many people coming up and looking at their documents and the, the formatting is just completely destroyed and there's no way to have a logical flow of the document and there are so, so many issues with it that I want to try to give a little video that will help in very simple ways show how you can make a very nice, very, um, a very well constructed document or manuscript that can be given in any situation that can be given as something professional in a job for a scientific review whatever it happens to be our very first um, focus will be just in general formatting a document now let's start with um, the basics when I develop a document when I'm writing an essay when I'm writing um, well anything really I need to realize that the number one rule that needs to be followed is the idea of consistency. There are a million different formats that you can follow from the APA style to the MLA style to the Chicago style to the Harvard British style, not just in citations but in um, writing the document itself. Now none of these methods and none of these styles are written in stone. None of them are the best style and even if you don't follow any of these styles, it's perfectly okay. The main idea that you need to follow isn't the idea of I need to follow the APA style per se. It's that I need to have a well-written, consistent document that I'm going to use. What does that mean? Well, if I'm going to make a document, I need to realize that when I'm making my header, a basic header needs to have the same exact format. So, for example, if I use bold 14, for my header, then that needs to apply to every single part of the document. If I'm making a main header, that needs to be my format. If I have my second one being bold font 12, then that needs to be the case. If I'm numbering them in a certain way, that needs to be the case. I can't randomly underline, like for example, let's say I have uh, this part, lorem ipsum, and you have as a header, I'm going to make it bold 14, and um, yeah. This is going to be my main header. I can go down and go onto the next header and say, you know what? I think this part is important, so I'm going to underline it. I can't do that. The idea is that if my header looks in a certain way, bold 14, then all of them need to be bold 14. I can't randomly put a colon after one and a semicolon after another and then nothing after another. They all have to be exactly the same. Now, the same goes for subheaders. If I have, for example, my heading system being bold 14 and then my subheader I want to use, let's go down, let's say that this is a subheader and I use bold 12. Once again, all subheaders in the entire document need to follow this same constant, concept. And what this means and what this applies to is that when I'm going through a document, when I'm reading a document, and I see a bold 14, I know I've gone into a new section. When I go into bold 12, I know that it is a subsection of the previous section, but I'm still within the general concept. So if I'm talking about branding, and then within branding, I'm talking about brand loyalty, and then brand equity, and then brand whatever, all of these will be subheaders of the major header of branding. As long as I don't create a new bold 14, I haven't exited the main concept that I am talking about, and it helps me, the reader, understand what it is that you're writing about. Now, when I'm writing in this perspective, Word has a million tools in order to help me. I've seen, like I said, I've seen so many terribly formatted documents when formatting in Word is the easiest thing in the, in the world. Let's stick with the default style of Word. Let's say I want the regular header to be consistent. I'll go up and I'll click on Heading 1. 
As you can see, it has a certain kind, it has a certain style. It's Calibri Light Font 16. I go down, I use Heading 1, it's Calibri Light Font 16. I go down. This one is the Heading 2, it's a subset, so I do Heading 2, and it becomes a subset of the previous. Now I want you to look at the side here and the navigation of the document. Do you see how it says here, Lorem Ipsum, Morbi, whatever? It has my headers and it has my subheaders. Not only does this help me look through my document, let's say I want to go back up here, I click, I'm suddenly navigated there. But it also helps me understand the organization of the document, which comes first, next, last. And whatever is put in my headers there can be put in an automatic table of contents to be put in the document. How? Well, it's very simple. Let's push this down for a bit. And let's say insert. Uh, excuse me, References, Table of Contents. Suddenly, lo and behold, we have our Table of Contents. We have in Table 1, we have our first header and our second header. Then we have in Page 2, we have our subheader. This may not seem very big on a 2-page, 3-page, 4-page document, but in a 100, 200, 500, 1,000 page document, this becomes a massive deal when it comes to how can I deal with my document, how can I help edit it, how can I organize it and look through it, how can I create my bookmarks when I'm developing a PDF later on. All of that is related to the headers and the subheaders. Now this is not the only way to do the table of contents and the, 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 uh, in this way. There's a more manual method if we weren't using uh, the, the style part as of here. What you could do is you could um, highlight it and go into references and say add text and you could put it into level one, meaning the first header, the main header, level two, one underneath, level three, one underneath, in order to organize it, okay? And that is a way that could be done if you're more confident in your word abilities and you have your own style that you're using. However, for a person just beginning, just wanting a regularly or decently formatted document, this is the method I strongly, strongly recommend for you to follow. Just put your headers, put the subheaders using the Microsoft style, do it that way, and then put a table of contents and voila, everything is perfect. Now if you don't like the default Microsoft style, you can go into the design tab as of here and just go through all of the different styles that are there and go through them until you find the one that you like. And there are plenty and you can go through and it'll change it in real time. It's not that you have to do it before you start your document. You can do it at any point in your document, you can edit it and change it to whatever fits your own personal style. Honestly, I personally like the uh, the Microsoft style. I think it works quite well. And um, it's one that served me very well over the years, so I'm, uh, I'm happy with it and I'm sticking with it. Anyway, what other aspects can we work on in order to develop, once again, a well-formatted document, okay? Uh, for one, I would say don't sit and play around with the fonts and do all of these weird things. Stick with a, a generic font. You know, Times New Roman, Calibri, Arial are all perfectly fine fonts. If you want to go a little bit more fancy, you know, there's things like um, a Lucidia Sans and Lucidia Serif, and there's um, Helvetica and other fonts that work perfectly fine. Moving on. Whenever you're writing a document, it's always good to have a page number do in this situation is we're going to find out how to put a um, the page number but also in a certain way in a special way we're gonna go insert page number bottom of page and we put the number now you may be thinking to yourself well obviously you know anyone who uses word is gonna know how to put a page number that's something completely ridiculous and stupid however there is a very important point here which is what there are different ways to put the page number and a lot of times they fit in different ways in the kind of document you're making. For example, I made a table of contents. A lot of times when you're talking about um, a document or a thesis or a manuscript or script, the part where you put the table of contents and the acknowledgments and the uh, list of tables and list of figures and all of these different things are usually given a different sequence, a sequence of page numbering which is different from your page numbering. Usually, for example, what I'm used to is seeing Roman numerals, or especially lower caps Roman numerals, as the first couple of pages, and then when you go into the actual um, paper itself or the actual manuscript, then you start starting over from one up until the end of the document. So how do you do this? Well, let's start with uh, the very beginning. 
First, in order to do this, you need to split up your document into sections. You do this by going into Layout, going into Break, and see Section Breaks. You want Next Page. What will happen here now is I have two sections. I have this part with the Table of Contents, okay, and if I add parts to this, it'll remain in that section, so we'll call this Section 1. And then we'll have the actual content, and this we'll call it Section 2. Actually, perhaps it would be more accurate to call it Section 0 and Section 1, but whatever. Uh, I don't want to get too confusing. Now, how do I change everything? How do I get different page numbers? Well, let's go into the footer of Section 2 and unclick this button that says Link to Previous. When I undo it, what it means and what will happen is that it will no longer have anything to do with the previous section. So I'm free to change the previous section however I want. Now, when I go into this section and I open up the footer, and then I go, I right click the, uh, the, the number, and then I'll click Format Page Number. And I'll say, I want the number format not to be 1, 2, 3, no, I want it to be I, 2I, 3I. And, okay. And there we have it. Now it is I. And if I go down, uh, because I unlink the other part of the document from it, I'll find I, and then I'll have 2. As you can see, they're completely different. Now if I go down and make a new page, I'll see now I have 2i, and then down here, there are 3. Now this is still not exactly what I want. I don't want my document to start at 3, over my manuscript or the actual content. I want it to start with page 1. So here in the footer, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to right-click it and format page number, and I'm going to say start at 1. So now I have I, 2i, and then I start 1, 2, 3, etc. And it continues. In this way, you're able to split up, and this applies to everything. Let's say you want different headers and different footers. What if you have want, um, you know, every single section, you want a different header where you have the summary or the name of the chapter or the section that you're on. This is the same method that you will utilize in order to do so. Okay, well, what else can you do? Well, um, we can also do um, uh, a situation where we want our cover page. Let's um, put all this down one moment. We want our cover page to not actually have a number. Okay, uh, excuse me, I'm just trying to put this somewhere else. So let's say I have this main page. Excuse me, I'm just getting a little bit confusing. But I don't want it to have a number. Why it's the cover page? It's the main page. It's the one on the front. How do I get rid of it? Well, easy. I simply go over to the footer, and then I say, different first page. So I go up, and as you can see, the numbering over here is gone. So now I'm free to make my um, front page in whatever way, in whatever manner that I want, and design it without having a number on it, which is uh, very much preferred to avoid. Moving on in the different techniques that can be used, um, a lot of times you also want to identify not only the content as in the headers and the sections, but you also want to identify the tables in the figures, as in a list of tables and a list of figures. How do you do that? Well, let's say you have a table, and then you want to put, give it a name. So you have insert caption, you have table 1, and let's say um, table 1, um, empty table. Now, tables are traditionally put above, whereas figures, the, ca the, the caption is put below, okay? So, here we have that, and let's say, um, let's put in a, a picture of, um, of a book, there we go, and we'll say insert caption, and we'll say label figure low selected item, there we go. And let's also give it a five room. Um, oh, cover. Okay. Here now, we've not only given them captions, but we've also given a way to adjust if any changes happen to the document. What do I mean by that? What happens if I say, you know what, I want to go back and I want to add another table before it? I'll do insert caption. Okay. And I want to label table. I want it above the circle admin. First, empty table. 
Notice what happens in the table below it. It went from table 1 automatically to table 2. This will help you keep your entire manuscript organized in that you don't have to worry about what's first, what's second. I, I called it table 4, I called it figure 5, and then it's changed to fi figure 6, and this is changed to figure 7, and I forgot to do this, and all of these different problems. Now, here is a trick that uh, I learned oh, very late in the game. What happens if it doesn't update automatically? You did the captions, you did the things, but it's not updating. I mean, for example, if I delete this, my second table doesn't immediately revert back to table 1. How do I fix this? Press Control P. When you go into the print preview, all of these different fields automatically adjust and they go back to what exactly it's supposed to be. This goes for the table of contents, this goes for the captions, this goes for the cross-referencing, and so on. Speaking of cross-referencing, what if I want to reference the table in my document? Okay, well, what I do is I go into references, cross-reference, table, let's say only tape, label and number, insert. Now it says table 1. If this becomes then table 2 later on, let's say if we, um, as I said before, let's add a table, that's the thing, and let's control P in order to update everything. This reference will now say table 2. And over here, it'll also say table 2. So once again, if I'm referencing a bunch of images and I have 50 images in my manuscript and then suddenly I add one at the very beginning, I don't have to manually go back and fix all of my 50 images and the reference for each one. No, I press Control P, everything is immediately fixed. Finally, and this is the last thing that we're going to talk about, is I'm going to talk about um, putting a list of tables. Okay. When I put the table of contents, sometimes, uh, depending on the need, I want not only the table of contents, but I want the list of tables that are in my document, or the list of figures that are in my document. Okay. Usually this is done on its own page, so I click Insert Table of Figures, and I say, all right, Caption Label, I want the tables first, for example. And from Template, okay, and here I have my list of tables. Let's go down. Insert table of figures. This time I don't want the caption level table. I want the caption label figure. I say OK. And now I have, here I'll have, uh, if we even take this for the same formatting. A moment. Oh, I apologize for this moment. One moment, just the, uh, sometimes the word kind of freaks out. OK. And if I say uh, here, list of tables, and here you have list of figures. Now, when you're doing something like this, and in general in your document, if you want something to be at the head at the beginning of a page, and list of tables and list of figures should start their own page, you'll want to go into insert and go into page break. This will ensure that no matter what you do later on in your document, that part will remain at the head of your of your page. So let's say we want this uh, header to stay at the head of the page no matter what. We'll do insert page break, and then it's there. No matter what I add here, oh, excuse me, I did it after the page break. No matter what I add here, it won't move the, the, the header at the beginning of the page. If I go past it, Suddenly, it'll move it down a page, but it'll remain as the top of the page. So if I have a main header, introduction, literature review, whatever analysis, it will remain as the header and not suddenly move up or move down or anything like that. I think that's enough for a, just a basic overview on how to make a nice and well-formatted uh, document or manuscript. These are all, of course, basic things when it comes to Word and formatting, but like I said, I've seen too many issues where a lot of people don't know these, these things, they don't know how to make a well-formatted document, and then if you're making a big document, everything just gets out of hand, and you don't know how to keep track of all of your tables and figures and all of these things, and I've seen, and this, this breaks my heart, seeing people manually make a table of contents, that, that just, that hurts, that honestly it hurts. I hope with this you'll understand just the basics of how to make a nice, nice document that you have control over, that you can deal with, and this will help you in writing your manuscript, your thesis, your paper, your assignment, whatever it happens to be. 
I hope this uh, lesson helped you out, and if you're all interested, I'm going to continue this, se uh, this series by talking about citation management, by talking about other aspects of organized writing, how to come up with a research idea, and then going into in-depth on how to write a thesis and what are the areas that you should focus on, how to do it, how to get, get everything together, what are all the tools that you can use, etc. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, click on the links on the side. If you want to see more of these videos in the future and keep kept up to date with all of my uh, new activities and so on, please click on the subscribe button. We're still a small channel with not much content, but I'm working to change that in the near future. Don't forget to leave a like and comment below, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you.